Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to Ibiscus Motorsports. As you read from the title of this video, we're going to be talking about my top mod list for MX-5 Mazda Miatas. Now, these cars are super fun from factory, but uh, there's definitely things that you can improve on them. So without further ado, let's get into that list so you can make your Miata awesome. Alrighty, so how this uh, list is going to be broken down is first we're going to be talking about mods I think are more important, not so much more important, but important for a street car. And we'll be talking about mods that kind of fall in the range between a street and a track car and then a full track car. As if you've never seen my channel before, uh, hi, welcome. Uh, this is, you know, my NA Mazda Miata. It is a complete track built car. I'm doing a bunch more stuff to it. Uh, but so that's why I wanted to kind of include some track stuff for if anybody's, you know, looking at building a track Miata. Here's some easy things that you can do to really step it up to the next level. Uh, so first things first on this list, as uh, that's what we're here for. Hard tops. Now, I know hardtops are very expensive, and none of these items on this list are in any order of favorable to me. It's just how they how I broke them down. So, hardtops are obviously very expensive, but from going from not having a hardtop to having a hardtop, it makes a world of a difference. Now, once hardtops are fully bolted down, they do actually improve the handling of the car, giving it a little bit more uh, chassis rigidity. And also, uh, I think personally they just make the car look cooler. Now, if you're really into the convertible look, obviously then a hard top's not for you. Uh, but another thing too is from the tracks uh, side of, of everything is that hard tops definitely improve the aerodynamic efficiency of Miatas. So any convertible, uh, whether it be with the soft top, the soft top makes it less but not as much. Um, and then, or just with no top in general, when air is passing over the top, it gets really messed up up here. It kind of doesn't follow a nice smooth pattern so if you're running things with a rear wing or anything like that it's not going to be as efficient as the airflow over it isn't going to be as, as smooth and direct uh, so hard tops definitely just improve you know overall efficiency i think they make the car look cooler also not a lot of people have hard tops obviously because the cost of them so if you have a hard top just makes your miata look a little bit more exclusive i guess uh, but yeah so definitely number one in my opinion is hard tops Alrighty, so the second item on my list that I think really helps and is a good mod for uh, street Miatas is wheels and tires. Now, as you can tell, uh, these are just very, very cheap wheels I have just for my Miata to be on the street. And I have uh, Nitto Neogen tires, uh, but upgrading from, you know, the stock, my Miata had 14 inch in diameter by six inch wide wheels. And I went with the usual Miata standard of 15 inch in diameter by eight inches wide. Uh, I think it just fits the look of the car much better. Definitely fills out the fenders a lot more as these cars are very, very tucked uh, from factory. So these overall, you know, they improve the look of the car by a lot. They don't look really, you know, it clearly doesn't look stock. Um, also, if, you know, you're just having some fun in the street, you know, back roads driving, uh, you know, upgrading your tires from just generic, like highway tread alter or all season tires. Uh, to, you know, something a little bit more sport-oriented will definitely improve the handling of your car, make it feel a lot nicer. Uh, so, yeah, overall, you know, I think wheels definitely, you know, wheels for Miatas, you can definitely get them pretty cheap. I got these wheels, I think, for around, like, five, $600 for the set of four. So, that's a nice thing about Miatas, too. You know, obviously, these parts are pretty inexpensive for these cars. So, wheels definitely uh, is another terrific mod and tires. Another terrific mod on the uh, list for a street Miata. Alrighty, so the next mod I think is terrific for a street Miata is going to be upgrading your radio or head unit, whatever you want to call it. Uh, don't mind the massive shifter here, we'll talk about this later. But Miata's from factory, mine had a single DIN radio and a little pocket. To be honest, the single DIN radio was definitely aftermarket. The previous owner of this car put it in and it was terrible. So I got a Pioneer DMH-1500 NEX head unit. I don't know if they make these ones anymore. I was told that they're discontinued, but I'm not sure. This is a fantastic head unit. Um, I just wanted one with like Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, GPS navigation, all that. But upgrading, just even just upgrading your head unit definitely improves the sound of the sound system in the car. Not by a lot. You'd have to upgrade your speakers and your wires and all that. But definitely by just switching at the head unit, I have noticed an improvement. But, you know, obviously for a track car, you're not going to, you know, once a track car is fully gutted, you're not going to have a radio or anything like that. But for street Miatas or Miatas, you know, that still go on the roads and all that, upgrading your radio is definitely nice. Definitely helps modernize the interior as these cars are definitely, they definitely do show their age. They're a little bit older, obviously. So 
upgrading your radio is a huge plus in my opinion. Alrighty guys, don't mind the uh, missing rear bumper here, but the next mod on this list is going to be a exhaust. Now, Miata from Factory, if you've been in one or, you know, if you're just curious, they don't sound very cool from Factory, they're very quiet, so upgrading to even just a catback exhaust like I have makes a huge difference uh, in terms of, you know, sound. The look of it looks so much cooler with the bigger exhaust to bigger diameter. You can definitely even get a couple horsepower out of just changing your exhaust, make it a little bit less restrictive. And I mean, at the end of the day, who doesn't like more horsepower and a much cooler sounding car? So you can get Miata exhausts for a very cheap, definitely an incredible mod that you can do. And uh, yeah, that's why it's on the list. Alrighty, so the next mod on this list is, you can't really see it right now, but we're gonna be talking about coilovers now. If you don't know what coilovers are, obviously that is your suspension, your springs and shocks that hold your car up. Um, upgrading your coilovers can allow you to get rid of the, as everybody hates, the terrible um, fender to wheel gap that these cars come from factory. As you can see, I've got very little. You can get that much lower, but I still want my car to, you know, not bottom out every time I drive it. But, you know, can fit, you know, about like, eh, about one and a half fingers in there before it's stuck. So definitely, uh, you know, can improve the look of the car, which is a huge plus. Uh, these cars, I, in my opinion, look awesome with a, you know, a good ride height. Not, you know, slammed on the ground, but not, you know, lift in the air, but a nice, a nice ride height definitely improves the look of these cars, in my opinion. Uh, if you want to slam these cars, though, you easily can if that's what you're in for, too. Even if you want to lift it, you can do coilovers to lift it. So they definitely allow you to dial in how you want the car to ride and what to look like. Also, they improve handling, which is another awesome positive. Uh, so, yeah, you know, obviously coilovers, too, are huge in the terms of, of you know, of track racing and all that. Uh, but we'll talk about that later because all these mods so far on the list have also are also, you know, things you can do for your track car. But again, we'll talk about that later. Uh, right now we're focusing on street cars, so yeah, definitely uh, a huge upgrade uh, if you want your car to look better and handle handle much better. So the next mod, uh, this is when we're going to start transitioning to mods that can kind of be for a street car or a track car, kind of like the Weekend Warrior. Um, is Now I know a lot of people, especially for street cars, like to upgrade things that they can see or, you know, make a huge difference. Obviously nobody wants to spend their money on things that aren't going to do anything. The next mod is going to be bushings now. The only bushing I can easily show right now is the door bushings, but upgrading all the bushings on your car to polyurethane bushings makes a huge difference. Now, I know again, these aren't really visible, obviously nobody really cares about the door bushings, but even just upgrading these door bushings makes a huge difference in how the car handles. Uh, switching from, you know, the old rubber bushings that are all going to be, you know, beyond squishy right now and ripping apart to a nice set of polyurethane bushings for, you know, your control arms, your rear differential, your door bushings, anything like that, it makes a huge difference. I'm going to be doing control arm bushings very soon in this car, um, but, you know, the diff bushings, that they make a huge difference. So definitely, you know, a good upgrade. I know it's not one that a lot of people like to do, especially for a street car because you can't really see it, but it makes a huge difference when it comes to the handling of the car. Alrighty, so the next uh, mod in the hybrid zone of uh, street track car is there are going to be three mods grouped in this category when you're talking about seats, harnesses, and steering wheels. Now, in my personal opinion, I like just to do all three of these mods at the same time, just obviously because I know a lot of people like to argue about, oh, or, you know, a detachable steering wheel with your OEM seat isn't safe, or harnesses and all that. It's, 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 we're not going to get into any of that, but I just like to, I did all three uh, within a week of each other when I did them on my car. So, upgrading. Obviously, a bucket seat is a huge upgrade to the car. Now, obviously, you're, you might be asking if you don't know how. Uh, you know, these seats, obviously, it's not going to make the car any faster, but it's going to make you faster. So instead of, you know, if you're taking out a fast corner or something like that in, like, the OEM seat over there, you're going to be sliding around a little bit. So these seats, you stay very firmly planted, and you don't really shift around, so you can focus more on driving. And even upgrading a seat can actually shave la uh, seconds off your lap time. Obviously, a harness is good for a seat like this, obviously, because that's what they're designed to be used with, to hold you in in the event of a collision. And steering wheels, I just noticed that the OEM steering wheel in my car was massive, and it was hard for me to get in and out when I did the seat and harness. So I did a detachable steering wheel. 
Uh, that's completely up to preference, but also, I mean, I personally think it makes the interior look a lot cooler, look, makes it look a lot more purpose-built, and I personally love the look of race cars like this. I love function function cars, and they look awesome. So uh, if you're into that, uh, these kinds of parts definitely improve the look of your car. Alrighty, so the next mod on the list is going to be short throw shifters. Now, I decided to put this in this category because you can buy, you know, the, the cheaper, like, $60 to $80 short throw shifters that a lot of people do for the street. That's perfectly fine. Those definitely do something. Or you can buy something that's a little bit more purpose-built, like this one. Now, in my car, personally, I have a G Racing short throw shifter. Uh, definitely more expensive than, you know, the $60 to $80, like, universal, like, eBay ones or other companies' ones like that. Uh, definitely doesn't look like the OEM design anymore. Um, and then I just made a custom titanium shift knob for it. So if you would ever get one of these shifters, it does not come with the shift knob. I'm sorry. I just wanted a much taller shift knob than, um, what was offered as I like my shifter being basically the same height as my steering wheel. Uh, anyway though, but so this is definitely a more purpose built shifter. I wouldn't really say that this is going to be one for a street car. You definitely could, um, if you like the look of it, I know some people do. But, you know, again, on certain street cars, some people like to save money for other things than, you know, a short throw shifter. But, I mean, definitely a huge upgrade. Obviously, you know, being able to, to bang through gears a lot faster is a huge upgrade over, you know, the stock one as it has a lot of a lot of play and all that. I mean, very, very short throws on this thing. Short throw shifters are awesome. Uh, so, definitely worth uh, your hard-earned money. Alrighty, so the next mod is again going to be another interior mod. Now we're going to be starting to get to mods I think that are more track car focused. Now, you could do these for a street car. I wouldn't really recommend it as it's going to, you know, the car is going to be a lot louder, going to be a lot more rattly, things like that. Uh, but right now we're going to be talking about a interior delete. So as you can see, I have no carpets anymore. This is just like heat shield, uh, kind of like foam that I got because the transmission tunnel gets very hot, obviously. My center console is gone. Um, it's really about all I've removed. In the back, I removed the carpeting and the soft top from out of the car, so I just have the hard top now. Um, and I mean, just removing all of that, I think I saved about like 60 pounds. So this is, you know, another awesome mod because it's completely free, just takes, you know, a couple hours to do. Uh, but deleting parts of your interior for a track car, obviously, first things first, less so fire hazard, those carpets, you know, without having them, there's no chance of anything, your feet lighting on fire and potentially spreading a fire. Uh, again, it's free, which is awesome. And I mean, just doing that, I think I saved around like 60 pounds. So you'd be really surprised like what weight adds up in these cars. Um, Obviously, a full track-built car isn't going to have things like the door cards, the passenger airbag. I'm going to be getting rid of that soon in my car once I have a you know another seat and all that for my passenger. Uh, but that you can save some weight on. Uh, if you want to delete your AC and power steering, you can save some weight on it. Obviously, radios, they don't weigh a ton, but you could save some weight on the sound system. So, you know, this is definitely more of a track-focused build. Uh, but you'd be really surprised how much weight you can pull out of these cars. So it's definitely a awesome mod if you're looking at building your car for track. And also, like I said, it's free. Alrighty, so the next mod, obviously I know not every track car has this, and there's actually street cars who have it. So I personally want to put this in track because I think if it's built 100% purpose-built and not built for looks at all, it definitely is for track. And that is rear and front arrow. Now, uh, my car personally, I have a Nine Lives Racing rear wing and up front. I have a just sheet of plastic I made an aerodam out of and a piece of plywood I got from my local hardware store and made a huge front splitter out of. Now, obviously, that's not what everybody likes on their car. Some people think it looks ugly. You know, obviously, for example, for this wing, you got to cut notches in your trunk lid. Uh, so, completely, you know, it's completely functional, all that, because it doesn't just bolt to the trunk lid. It, you have to drill holes through the rear of the car, and it bolts through like that, so, you know... I'm shaking the whole car right now doing this. So, you know, Arrow, huge upgrade. Definitely, uh, it's not actually all that that expensive of a mod. Uh, again, in my opinion, definitely more of a track-focused build. As, again, I've been to a lot of car shows and people really don't like the look of this thing or they'll, you know, I, the question I always get asked is, oh, is it functional? And by that, then I stand on top of the wing and because it can support that easily and that's how I prove to people that it's completely functional. It's not just like, like, 3m double-sided taped to to my car but arrow obviously definitely can help shave seconds off a lap as these create downforce and if you don't know what downforce is obviously it's what the name is it's 
the force being pushed down on your car helps your car stick to the ground better so you can take corners faster all that uh, now at very high speeds they can produce some drag to slow you down a little bit but nine lives racing has done a ton of work on that so miatas are personally good in my opinion if you're going to be doing a rear wing on a miata that's track built go to nine lives racing for that uh, their wings are awesome but not sponsored but just just quick little shout out to them those wings are cra or crazy good but um yeah rear arrow and front arrow definitely huge improvements to the car i've noticed a ton on the track from when i didn't have it to now when i have it the car handles so much better with it uh so yeah definitely um really more focused for a track built car specifically you could do it on a street car but obviously you do have to may or understand that you know obviously you not everybody's gonna like it so if you're concerned about how other people like your car which in my opinion you never should be build your car for you um but yeah so uh awesome mod Alrighty, so this next mod, uh, it's going to be a little hard to see uh, going in there. So with this thing with um, white duct tape on it, and then behind that, we're going to be talking about oil coolers and radiators. Now, most street cars will never need an oil cooler in their life. Uh, oil coolers mainly are for track cars, as you know, obviously you don't want your oil to overheat. Miatas from factory don't come with oil temperature gauges, usually just oil pressure. So if anything would ever go wrong, you wouldn't really know, and obviously that's not good. You want to know if your oil is overheating. And then radiators, uh, you can definitely do on a street car, especially if you are, again, forced induction, as that adds a lot of heat to everything. You can do an oil cooler, too, for forced induction, especially if you're turbocharged. Uh, but usually, I've seen a lot of street cars don't end up needing oil coolers. Uh, it's mainly just for, you know, if you're pushing your car to, like, rev limiter every time you shift it, all that on a hot, hot summer day at the track. Uh, but definitely, you know, great mods for a, uh, for a Miata. As I have noticed on the track, I've definitely overheated the oil before. Uh, these cars tick really bad when you do it. It'll you'll know if you ever overheat the oil. But you know, obviously, oil coolers. Like I said, especially if you're naturally aspirated, you'll never need it on the street unless if you live in a really really hot area and you're you know beating the crap out of your car on the road. Uh, most people will never need an oil cooler. Same thing with a radiator. I'm still on my OEM radiator radiator actually in my car because I'm naturally aspirated. That's perfectly fine for cooling on the track you know obviously so completely up up to you you know but if you're forced induction i'd recommend looking at upgrading those two uh but yeah so um huge mod you know definitely with the reliability of the car and uh it's a terrific thing to do so the next mod for track cars as you know obviously we already talked about so we're talking about wheels tires and suspension track cars it matters a lot more in my opinion than it does in a street car most people for the street like to, you know, pick out wheels for what they look like and things like that. Track cars, all you really care about when it comes to wheels is weight. Tires, obviously, is you want to run something that's nice and sticky. And suspension, you can get upwards of, you know, four or $5,000 from Miata and coilovers. So definitely, you know, huge, huge, you know, change versus what a lot of people will buy for the street for like maybe like $800 to $1,000 coilovers. Uh, for my car personally, I have Avanti Racing S1 Storm wheels as my track wheels, and I have um, Maxxis Victra RC1 Racing Slicks. Uh, those are put away, obviously, for winter right now because I don't want those getting cold and hard. Uh, but definitely a much different, you know, wheel and tire than these. I would never take those on public roads. You know, if it, if it rained, I'd be in a, in a terrible spot. So... You can obviously get, you know, tons, tons deeper into suspension for race cars and, you know, wheels and tires, all that. Um, and then another mod on top of uh, this if for a track car is going to be sway bars. Now, I personally didn't even really know anything about sway bars when I started building this car. They make a huge difference. Uh, I have a racing beat front sway bar in my car. This car definitely, Miata's from factory, like to oversteer a little bit on the track, even even with stock horsepower, they oversteer a little bit. That racing beat front sway bar has completely killed that. Um, if you want to know more about, you know, sway bars or wheels and tires, I have made two videos on that. I'll link them at the end of the video talking about, you know, breaking down the science and all that. But huge mods, I think, for track cars. Um, you know, obviously, the wheels and tires, you know, will make a huge difference. Suspension makes a huge difference. Even just the sway bar makes a huge difference. So... Definitely uh, definitely more track focused as you don't really care that that much about handling for public roads, uh, but for track cars, you definitely do. So the next mod that definitely would nobody would really look into for a street car really is going to be brakes. Uh, now, 
On my Miata, personally, I have just OE, OEM style, just, you know, basic rotors with um, carbon fiber metallic brake pads. Now, I have done track days with stock brakes, uh, carb or ceramic metallic brake pads, and carbon fiber metallic brake pads. And it's just an upgrade each time from OEM style brakes to ceramic is a huge upgrade. But I noticed after like maybe like a, <clears throat> excuse me, sorry, also car driving by. Uh, I've noticed, you know, probably like after like a, like a 10 minute session, brake pedals kind of starting to get a little spongy as, you know, brake fade. If you don't know what that is, that's when your brakes overheat and they don't stop as efficiently. So brakes definitely for a track are a huge upgrade. With these carbon fiber brakes, I've done like 20 minute sessions no brake fade at all. I can just mash the pedal as hard as I want. Never, never fade at all. Obviously, if you're wondering what's the point of upgrading brakes, the, you know, the better the brakes you have, the later you can hit the brakes to stop so you can go even faster and go deeper into a corner on the gas. Just shave seconds off your lap again. For a street car, you really wouldn't care too much about this as usually, unless you're driving crazy, usually, you know, your brakes OEM style brakes or things like that would look cool. I guess if you want like drill or slotted rotors to look cool, you could do that. Um, I'm personally just good with what I have, but you know, definitely brakes are huge for a purpose built car. Alrighty, so now the probably the last mod uh, we're going to be talking about in this video for track cars is going to be deleting body panels. Now, as you can see, I don't have my rear bumper, uh, bumper cover, or any of that anymore. And now up front, it looks like I still have my OEM bumper, but if we unlatch it, because I built myself a quick release bumper on this car. Another cool thing if you're looking at a track car, but definitely not necessary. It's gonna be a little hard to pull out, um, unless I unlatch both sides, but if you kind of look, it's a little hard to see. There is no more front bumper. The front bumper now is just the, uh, is just simply the air dam right here, the sheet of plastic. I cut out, you know, as you can obviously see, cut out everything here. There's a little bit of what's left of the OEM bumper right there that I still have to cut. Uh, obviously, you know, another mod, just weight savings kind of going along with the interior deletes when it comes to a track car. You don't care what it looks like as long as it gets the job done. You know, ripping off the rear bumper and everything in the front has probably saved me like 30, no, I'd say maybe like, 15 to 30 pounds. I haven't weighed them yet, so I, I, that's my rough estimation in the guess range. That guy needs brakes. <laughs> um, but, you know, it's just another another free mod that you can do for a track car. It can definitely improve stuff. Also, when it comes to the rear bumper of Miatas, the rear bumper is kind of shaped like a C or like a kind of like a crescent style shape. So it acts like a parachute where when air goes up into it, it can kind of create drag like a parachute does. So, some people like to cut the bumper. I said I didn't care and just unbolted the whole thing. Never have to worry about it. Worry about the drag or anything like that. Also, in all honesty, it was faster for me to do that than cut it. And I wanted to do it because I just wanted to see what it looked like. Um, but definitely, you know, another free mod that you can do to a track built Miata that's um, completely free. And I think uh, definitely improves the performance of the car. Alrighty guys, so I'm very sorry if this video kind of jumped around a little bit. Um, while I was thinking of the list and all that, I just thought of mods that I've personally done to my Miata from when it was originally a street car to then when I figured, you know, oh, I want to start doing track days and started, you know, having my Miata still be a street car, but, you know, was starting to look at some track focused mods and then decided to devote it to full track car. So that's where the inspiration of this video kind of came from of just you know kind of going from street mods to middle ground to full track mods um so i'm sure that there are mods you know that you can do to miatas obviously that i missed on this list this list sorry so i'm very sorry about that um but that's gonna do it for this video so if you enjoyed uh leave it a like uh down in the comments below you know leave whatever comment you want or you know obviously leave uh, your favorite mod down there uh tell me if i you know if I mentioned your favorite mod or not, if I didn't, definitely leave it down below. As again, I'm sure there are tons and tons of mods for Miatas that I didn't mention in this video that are incredible. Uh, like I said, these are mostly mods that I've done to my own personal car, excluding like the forced induction, but that was too big to obviously not include. Um, but so again, guys, thank you so much for watching. If, like I said, you enjoyed the video, leave it a like, leave a comment down below. 
If you find yourself coming back frequently or you know, you're know new to my channel and you really wanna help support me, uh, can please consider subscribing. It's completely free, um, but it would mean a ton to me. And if you do subscribe, first of all, thank you so much. Second of all, don't forget to click the notification bell, set that to all, so YouTube notifies you anytime I post a video. As I've been posting one a video about once every week, as I personally love making these videos, so I just wanna get them out for you guys to enjoy. Uh, so again, thank you so much, guys. Subscriber count's going up, views are going up, and I'm I'm stoked about it. You know, it's we're almost coming up on about a year. We got about a month till the one year anniversary of Hibiscus Motorsports. Um, so again, guys, thank you so much. The support means a ton to me. I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.